Mills Mulyaina about to join us. Feeds it off to Mulyaina. The All Blacks found to see a counter attack here. Conrad Smith again glides into the gap. Off goes Sivivanu using good speed. Sivivanu's got some support. Gives it off to Mills Mulyaina. And the fullback is in in his 82nd Test match. Mulyaina and Brad Thorne, 35 years of age. And he offloads brilliantly to Mulyaina. Now Manu, Conrad Smith. And here is Corey Jane. And Jane keeps it in play. Brilliant! Listen to those names, Conrad and Bathorn. Mills Mulyaina, that was uh, 2011. You think, all right. Mills, thank you so much for your time again. 100 tests for the All Blacks. Looking at it from this side of the television screen. I mean, the back line seemed to be so cohesive, so together, played so well. But I, I'm asking you because I want your eyes on it. Was that the best performance from an All Black back line all year since when? What? Oh, I think when you when you strip everything back, um, you know, with a lot of the, the emotion and the, the pressure that they've been under, I think we've seen the most. Um, you know, certainly this year, it's, it's probably the most clarity from um, the way they played in that in that back line. I think there was um, everyone was on the same page. They went in with a game plan that um, that really um, you, you really seen guys all being on that on that same page and, and knowing their roles within that sort of game plan. So I think from a fluency point of view and the trust, um, it's, it was certainly a, a, a very impressive performance. And you've got to, I mean, the other aspect while I was talking about the, the pressure, I mean, you know, that's just added. I mean, um, the way they went out there and, um, and, and, and at Alice Park, which is a, such a hard place to, to actually win, um, and... And play that game plan. I, was, I thought was, was was outstanding. So there was only one change made to that back line, though. Richie came in, and Bowden was on the bench. So it's yeah. such an improvement, though. What was it? Was it the recycling of the ball? Was it the quickness of the decision making? You said that they're all on the same page. We just seem to be able to all of a sudden be able to counter that rush defence. I love the way that Geordie was calling marks. I know it's really old school, but that was a way to defuse <laughs> their bombs, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. I mean, if you look at the back line, they ran a lot smoother. They look at guys like um, you know, Rico Ioane. He found a bit more space, but he had a bit more time. The depth from you know Richie, um, you know, he found his depth and in terms uh, of adapting to the the rush defence. But you've also got to look up front. I think that first thirty odd minutes that really set the scene in terms of um, you know, how we were going to play. Uh, we kept ball in hand. We won a lot of the contact, um, particularly our big boys. Um, but we were, we were also re- really patient about it. There wasn't any panic about how we were going to go about it. Even, you know, that cross-field uh, kick, um, you know, that... Uh, that Artie got, yeah. Um, that Artie got. I mean, you look at that bef- beforehand, and the ball actually, um, they got um, cleaned out, 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 out wide. I think Sam Kane ended up there late, cleaned it up, but it just bought them enough time to then be able to, um, you know, go back to Harvey Lee, or Richie initially to Harvey Lee, to then make a decision. Now... When you're under pressure, and the whole, you know, what feels like the whole country is, is, is against you, sure. um, back to you know, the criticism, to be able to do things like that um, under those sort of circumstances um, and, and effectively, um, you know, nail them and execute them the way they did. This is why it's made it so, um, you know, such a big, a big win. Um, you know, they're, they're all on the same page. They didn't panic. Um, they knew where the opportunities were. And effectively, in that first 30 odd minutes, although the Springboks came back, they really wore uh, the Springboks down. They, they took the sting out of their legs and the sting out of their, their, their line speed as well. Mills Mulloween, 100 Test veteran for the All Blacks with us. And we're talking about the, such improved backline. And look, when you're talking about Gast, uh, what stunned me was in those last few minutes, we're down a man and yet their forwards just couldn't get up and go to the rucks to recycle. That's how done they were. <laughs> well... And you, and you look at it. This is exactly the rugby that we love to play. Okay, well, but but it's got to almost be set up by um, you know winning that physical battle, and we've done that up front. We we, we won the contact with ball in hand. We won it also when we were um, you know making our, our tackles, our set piece. Um, whilst it wasn't overly dominant, it was it was still really steady, and then it allows us to play on top of the ground, which you want to do against these big boys. And when you get a kick to you, I mean, you know, Will Jordan tapping it quick. They had the the ability to actually reload, the fitness is there under you know, the high belt, and then go wide and find space, and then score from that when you're 14 off, um, you know, men, you know, one, one, one man down and score. Like that's the sort of rugby that we love to see and, and we love to play, but 
it was all set up by the confidence they went into that, that first 30 odd minutes, but also being able to say, hey, well, hey, we look across, there's, there's opportunities here, let's stick with it, but then execute it with accuracy. And that's what's been missing, Martin, over the last, you know, in that, in that test series against the Irish, um, you know, obviously in that first test match um, against the Springboks. Um, and so I think that uh, they're slowly starting to, to, to really click. To click. But the key is now is you know they've they've got to keep doing that now they've got to you know almost um, you know rise again um, because um, it just seems like everything's the, the game plan that they have there's no real confusion now um, you know there's lots of there's a template around it the skill and ability that we've got in our backline and in our forwards is, is amazing and we've just got to keep going and making making sure that we t- critique little wee things but uh, all in all play under that template. We had Andrew Mertens on on Friday, and he was um, explaining, it's just technically, he was saying we've got to be looking at, you know, with the rush defence, as they're coming up, it's from outside in. You know, we continuously tend to look back on the inside, and he says we've got to actually look right shoulder and actually keep forcing them wide. And I thought that that's what I saw Rico doing for a start. Plus also he looked hungry, looked as though he was going for work. Is that just a perception thing? But it just looked as though everyone really wanted, well, they just were a bit more energetic or something, or is that just me seeing things? Well, it's just—it's almost like sometimes you've got to set things up. So that crossfield kick that we were, we were talking about, that becomes narrow weapon. If you've used it early and you've got success out of Artie going down that side, they've almost scored, they get a yellow card. It, it almost what it does to the defence and makes them think twice. Okay, well, if we if we rush out too much and there's a cross kick, you know, option, okay, now they could easily punish us for that. And so you're putting them in two, in two minds. Once they're in two minds, you get a little bit more space and you go out go out wide. You have the ability to go out wide. When you've got confidence and you're executing well, well, well now, now what you've got is two options. Um, when everyone's on the same page and calling things, okay, um, then it's up to the drivers who we know have, um, have got the ability to execute those sort of um, that skill set, you know, the hard leads and the obviously which warmers that they're on the inside. And what it does is just frees everything up, you know, for guys like um, Rito to find a little bit of, bit of space, um, you know, explode through... Um, a, a, a small gap, um, but also from a defensive point of view, you know your your momentum and, and, and now your confidence in terms of you know turning things around when you know the springs up block and what they got got the ball and it's your, it's your turn also to get excited and, and really um, and tire them out throughout it. So it's, they often talk about it's a game within a game. Yeah, you, you're constantly winning these battles, and, and I think the way they set it up. Um, you know, the line speed, they, they put them in two mines and then when it was on to go, when they weren't quite rushing up, they had enough, enough depth to be able to really to really go. And that's why I just think it was a, such an impressive, first of all, game plan, but the way they executed it was outstanding. Mills Molina with us on the platform. We're talking about the victory in Joburg, of course. Richie Mawanga, I've always, I've always wanted him to to win a game like that because, you know, and here am I, you know, looking outside in, of course, but as an all-black and the 100 tests that you played, how important was it to to actually, f- you know, find your form in the biggest matches of all? And there is no bigger than Joburg. You can do it, you know, against other teams, but under that stress, under those circumstances, knowing what was at stake, how important is that for him now? Oh, hugely important. I mean, he's, he basically took, you know, um, took a bit of scruff of the neck. Um, I love the fact, because when you look at a guy like Richie Moore, he's, he's, he's a different type of player to, to bode in that team because he brings that um, sort of, they're both expected players but you almost look at them and say hey we're going to run everything, we're going to we're going to look at um, you know, trying to get wide, got nice footwork and everything's about running what I loved when, in Alice Park when I say to the Scott in the net is because when things weren't on he had the he had the patience to say well I'm just going to kick I'll, I'll kick it down the middle or I'll get hard lead to relieve, relieve me a bit of pressure and kick, kick down and find a little bit of space Let's regroup, um, and our defense is going well. I hope you know by the time that the Springboks kick back to us, you know we're now catching and then then have another crack, right? As opposed to trying to create something out of every opportunity you've got. And I think there's a real nice balance between in, in, in his game. And so to win a game like this, but to also control it the way he did, and also have the help of the other guys. That was very impressive um, because he brought a real balance to it. Because it's so easy, what like you say, the circumstances, you know, have, have what they sort of present to them. He goes out there, he wants to, to play this how to scout the game, which is very, very good at, and, and and break the line and set people up. So easy to be able to have that mindset. But when he went out there, it almost looked like he was focused on the bigger picture, controlling the game, making sure his forwards knew what he was 
um, you know, what they're going to do, calling the calls, even the, 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 the back, uh, back door calls that they're, they're calling, but he had enough depth. So the control aspect for me, um, for Mitch Moore, I was... Uh, was probably what impressed me most because we haven't seen that for a very, very long time, and because of other aspects, he was on the on the bench, he's been vying for you know position between him and um, Bodie. So the control, considering he hasn't sort of started uh, for the All Blacks for a wee while, um, was was very impressive from my point of view. A couple of quick questions, we'll let you go, and I thank you always so much for your time, mate. Um, Caleb, I mean, he's just cement now, isn't he? At number eleven, it was so good to see him back, and so good to see him playing as combative as that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who would want to tackle him in the no first one. couple of minutes? No one. Jesus. Uh, uh, he's, um, yeah, those big thighs of his are, yeah. um, are yeah. pretty crazy. Well, he's so BG Williams, nice isn't he, Mills? He's, he's, you know, he's, oh. he's, 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 Sir, he's Sir BG, mate. <laughs> and some. So I think it's just really nice to have him really, really one, energy. Okay, so he's he's got plenty of energy. He's looking to um, work off the balls, come off his wing. He done that nice little wee break in the first half that they eventually scored from um, Sam Kane. But I love the fact he's also, you know, just starting to find his his, his feet. There's plenty of competition in that back three department in the wingers. So, but he's becoming, you know, very dangerous. And, and his development is is, is um, it's really steady. You know, he had a went, went away and obviously with the sevens came back and um, you know he's played um, you know really well albeit that that injury. So his energy's there. But most importantly, he's starting to find some really sort of. Um, uh, he's becoming a real threat, threat because of his, he's powerful and, and he's also he's, he's got the ability to finish.